Welcome to my channel and let's paint a night sky. The brushes you'll need here will be a three quarter flat wash, a number six round, and a number four round. First thing we're going to do is a little sketchy sketch, only putting in the information that we need. This will mainly give you your direction of your mountains and where your trees are located. Next we're going to use a couple drops of dish soap and water to keep the masking fluid from ruining our brushes. And instead of using gouache later on in the painting, we're actually going to splatter some masking fluid for the stars. Now while that dries, let's clean up our mess. Okay, the colors I'll be using today will be from Rockwell Paints. You can use any purple, any pink that you have on your palette. Now we're going to mix three colors. One darker purple, one lighter purple, and one pink. To get the darker value, you can add a little Payne's Gray to your first purple. Make sure we get all the masking fluid splatter off the mountains, and you're going to wet your paper real good. Make sure to be real careful around your mountain tops to make sure you don't lose your mountain tops. I'm going to start off with a darker purple towards the top and slowly blend down to the horizon with the lighter pink. Now what I'm doing here is taking a damp brush and just kind of blending that horizon into the pink. Adding some more darks into the mix. Use the old heat gun. I'm not going to dry this totally, but I do want to dry her towards the horizon to where I can start on the mountains. Right now, watering down my mix for some shadows. With the first shadows, we're going to go real light. Remember, you can always go dark or you can't always get back white. This is where your sketch comes in real handy, as you'll know the directions these shadows are going. Remember, you can always soften up hard edges that you see. And who knows, you might actually like the hard edges. The paper I'm using during this painting is actually hot press paper, uh, because I enjoy paint. But if you're using cold press, you'll actually get a little more texture out of these shadows. And right now I'm adding a sepia tone. This is to give me some more darks for those trees. Most things close to you are bigger, so these trees are going to kind of get smaller as they go further back into the mountain range. Now I'm slowly kind of building rock structures in the mountain. This will 100% be easier on cold pressed paper. few more trees into this line. This is a darker, thicker mix of paint, and this is going to be more of a dry brush for those rock structures. As long as you're following your direction, everything will make sense on the mountain.
It actually can be really easy to overwork this mount with rock structures. Just be careful not to overdo it. This is just barely touching the paper with the brush. Slowly putting in smaller trees towards the back. Now we're going to go in with that purplish pink tone and start creating more shadows. This is going to darken the values and actually bring forth some depth into the mountain. Again, cold press makes this extremely easy to get texture out of this. With dry brush, you're only using the belly of the brush and barely any paint on it whatsoever. Now I'm going in with a darker mix, or some darker shadows. Be careful not to blend your mountain into your sky too much here. You want to make sure you're paying attention real good to the values. Now mixing a darker mix for darker shadows. Now I'm adding Payne's Grain to that purple. I'm gonna start putting in these trees towards the foreground. Now I'm going in with a zero brush to create these bigger trees towards the foreground. When putting these trees in the foreground, make sure that you're not making them all the same height, nor the same value. Mix up your colors, mix up your darks, and keep the trees kind of random. Adding some more darks into these tree lines right here. Now on this one, you'll have a thicker patch of trees right here. You can kind of build between the trees. Now with the dark mix, I'm going back in and creating small details in the mountaintop. These darks actually will pop out the shadows that you created earlier with the lighter washes.
This is barely any paint on the brush. I'm just kind of creating that dry brush texture. Adding in some shadows to the trees on this hilltop. And just a bit more dry brush. This is a rubber cement remover and the masking fluid that we'd splatter on top of the sky, this is gonna pull out those stars. It's a little meticulous, but I do enjoy the white of paper better than I like the white of gouache. Now we have our night sky. I want to say I appreciate you coming to the channel and make sure you hit that subscribe button for more content.